Yo, what's up everyone? It's DJ Rick Webb and today I'm going to be answering one of the number one questions that you guys always ask me and that is where do I get my music and how do I organize it and all that. So we're going to be talking everything music in terms of where I get my DJ music, where I get all my remixes, where how I organize my music. We'll be talking all of that. So let's just get on into the video. All right guys, so in this video, the way we're gonna break it down, first I'm gonna talk about where I get my music. This is probably one of the number one questions you guys ask, where do I get my music? So I'm gonna talk about that, and then I'm gonna dive into how I organize my music library and all that sort of stuff. So first off, let's talk about where I get my music. And specifically where I get my music from is a couple of music pools as well as from iTunes because a lot of times at weddings there's very specific songs that they want for the ceremonies that aren't typically on DJ pools. So I just tend to download them from iTunes because it tends to just be easier and it's 100% legal. Now before I jump onto the computer and talk about the music pools that I use, I got a preference the reason why you use DJ pools and not iTunes to download your music. First off, it's a heck of a lot cheaper to use a DJ pool. Second off, on a DJ pool, you're gonna get DJ edits with intro and outro um, music that allows you to mix better. And I talk a lot about this in my How to Mix for Beginners series that I did with Hercules. So I'm gonna link that in the description down below as well as up there. This shows you guys basically what a DJ uh, track is like. Alright, so the music pools that I use are Direct Music Service and BPM Supreme. First off, I want to clarify, I am in no way, shape, or form sponsored by either of these music pools. I pay 100% to actually be able to access these every single month. But first off, I want to jump into my favorite music pool and that is Direct Music Service. So this is my account inside of Direct Music Service. First off, I wanna just kinda of walk you guys through Direct Music Service and explain a little bit. First off at the top, they explain how much music they have available on their site. Right now it's 56.7 thousand songs available. That's, that, that's quite a bit of music. And they've added 47 just this week, and it is only Wednesday. So they will definitely add a lot more. Typically they're adding around 100 songs a week, 150 someday. Next on the left here we have a wish list. That kind of is what I use for when I'm on the app. Um, both of these pools, Direct Music and BPM, have an app. I'll show you guys that as well. They're very intuitive and it's nice to be able to listen to music and download it on the go. On the left here, you can browse for new releases, exclusives, custom search, top downloads, decades. Decades is one of my favorite things. And this honestly is one of the reasons why I love direct music service more than BPM Supreme. So to give you guys a background, a lot of my music currently on my library, a lot of it is from the original DJ company that I worked for up in Marriott, Ohio, and they use Top Hits USA. No problem with Top Hits USA. I got a ton of tracks. Most of them have intro and outro edits, but they're full versions. So. A lot of what I've been doing this whole entire 2019 season, this previous season of weddings was basically going through every bride and groom's request list and just songs that I know I use a lot at weddings and going into direct, direct music service and searching for those songs, all those older songs and finding quick edit versions or cut down versions or remixes, stuff to basically make my mixing easier and better, more clean, more fun. Uh, redrums, stuff like that, and I have been finding heavily that Direct Music Service has tons of the older tracks that I'm looking for. I'm talking about my 60s, my 70s, and my 80s tracks. They have most of them. So like right here, the 50s, they probably have around 100 songs on the 50s, but the 60s, as you can see right here on the right hand side, I can scroll for quite a bit here, and they have a lot of the hits that you guys will be playing. In fact, there's actually multiple pages. That is just the first page. There is a second page. There is a third page. There's a lot of songs just in the 60s alone. And the 70s, there's even more. So that alone, just going through the decades and having that large amount of older tracks, older hits that are very popular at weddings is 100% worth it alone for me to be able to have access to that. It's so helpful. So this right here is the new release feed. Again, it's every single track that is coming out every single day. You can see on the left hand side, the date that it's been added on. I actually go through and listen to every single one of these songs that they put out um, the hundred or so every single week. 
I basically take one day out of my week and basically go through and listen to the 200 plus songs or whatever, the 150 that have been added to the site and go through and select the ones that I want to download um, and then add them to my crates, etc. Now on the left hand side here, they do have the genre breakdown. So if you want to just listen to pop music and download different pop music, you can click on the pop list. You can also click on the top downloads up here and search by different genres and decades to download the top most downloaded songs that are on direct music service. They also have playlists at the top, so we can click on the playlist. And right here are the playlists for direct music service, the top DMS top picks, and all these are updating regularly. They got Latin bangers, house bangers, 90s, 2000s, 80s, new wave, indie, uh, trending bootlegs, Lots of cool stuff that DJs use. Lastly, one of the coolest things about direct music service, and this just took it over the top for me, is the DJ's tools category. This is stuff that DJs use a lot. And if you don't have these already, it you need to get on these because they help so much. So you got short, quick edits, a whole list of them, hype edits, transition tracks. Transition tracks are super helpful. Say you're playing at 100 BPM and you want to get to 128. Well, they have transition tracks here that go all over the place right here. So we can see good as hell. We have 122 to 98 transition. So it's going to start at 122 BPM and drop down to 98 BPM. You got 126 to 63, then back up to 126, 82 to 71. And they got tons and tons and tons of transition tracks. Yeah, as you can see down here, there's like 10 plus pages of transition track from all different genres, all different decades and they are super helpful I highly recommend if you get direct music to go through and download just about every single one of them because they're gonna help you so much in your mixing acapella outs redrums loops samples there's all kinds of samples from the damn song damn, son, where'd you find this? there's all kinds of different samples like acapella samples and you got the air horn in here somewhere as well. I've seen it. So again, DJ tools, super helpful. And then also you got blends, bootlegs, party breaks. The DJ tools category, if you get on direct music service, literally like take a good five days or so and go through everything that is in the DJ tools category. It's super helpful. One last thing before I jump off of DMS. One of the main reasons why I feel that they are so good is they have really good editors. The guys that put these songs up on DMS are no joke. Jason Jana is one of them. Simo is pretty good. Uh, Pete Down always posting fire edits. Dan Jizzy phrase you got scooter who is by far like my favorite editor on this whole entire pool uh do yourself a favor if you download dms search for scooter download every single track that he's got on here yeah you'll thank me later but yeah that's dms and let me finish up by talking a little bit about the kinds of music you're gonna find on dms and this will kind of transition into why i also use bpm supreme on dms you're gonna find a lot of hip-hop you're gonna find a lot of rap you're gonna find a lot of pop you're going to find a lot of R&B. They have quite a bit of Latin music as well. Um, I'm not really into Latin music. I don't download it, but they come out with a lot of Latin music every single week. In the older decades, they have a lot of rock. They have a lot of basically the top 40 hits of those decades, of those years. That's what you're going to find a lot of on DMS. One thing that I don't find a lot of on here, and that is a lot of the new country. A lot of country, just country in general, is lacking on DMS, especially a lot of the new pop country. Uh, I don't find a lot of it on here. A lot of slow songs are kind of lacking, especially the new hotter ones. So basically, if you're looking for a lot of country, DMS is not going to be it for you. If you are looking for a lot of hip hop, a lot of R&B, a lot of top 40, really sick edits, really awesome remixes, uh, basically all of the common stuff that you would play at a bar, a club, a wedding nowadays, other than the country side of it, DMS is by far my go-to. So now we move over to BPM Supreme, my second DJ pool that I have. Have. And the main reason, like I said, is because it has a lot of country. They have a lot of the country that I need. And I'm going to be straight up honest with you guys. DMS has a lot more of what I want. And that's why I really don't pay a lot of attention to BPM. Like on DMS, I go through all the new tracks every single week. I do go on here. I get my money's worth. I download quite a bit of tracks. Uh, a lot of it is country. A lot of it is slow songs. Sometimes BPM does have the new latest and greatest hit before DMS. Sometimes DMS has it before BPM. Sometimes DMS has the 
clean edit sometimes bpm has the clean edit and sometimes D dms does not have the clean edit bpm's great though bpm has a lot of playlists there's curated sets uh there's the new release section in here again i don't really pay much attention to bpm i'm mostly going on here searching for the tracks that i want and that i need i do go on here from time to time check the trends check what is the most popular downloaded and just basically that's all I really do on BPM Supreme. Uh, I will say if you guys want to learn more about BPM Supreme, I know Barr is a heavy user of BPM Supreme and he made a whole video on BPM Supreme. Um, so I'll link his video as well somewhere on here. Like I said, I don't use it that often. I'm more or less using DMS for most of my music downloads. That is my pool. That is my favorite by far. So now before we dive into my music organization and how all that works, let me quickly talk about pricing for these music pools. We'll talk about BPM first and BPM ignore the $9.99 price that is your first month only. What you're going to be looking at is either $19.99 a month for unlimited downloads or $29.99 per month if you want some of the bonus features such as playlists such as cloud rescue, HD audio streaming. That's more or less what you'll find in the higher $10 more a month. One thing that's nice about BPM is it's unlimited downloads. Now on direct music service, it's a little more expensive and it's a different pricing structure. So what you'll be looking at if you want 40 downloads a month is $29.95. If you want 80 downloads a month, you're gonna be looking at $44.95 or 45 bucks. And if you would like to do unlimited with DMS, you're gonna be looking at 65-ish dollars a month. Now, right now I have the 80 downloads a month subscription and I pay for a whole year so I save uh, quite a bit of money as you can see right there. I pay $360 a year to have 80 downloads per month. Now one thing, if you saw at the top of my DMS screen, it says that I have 879 downloads remaining. And this is because your downloads compound. So if you don't use all 80 downloads in one month, it's going to roll over to the next month and to the next month and to the next month. So one of my biggest suggestions is I would really suggest starting at 40 downloads a month because as you can see right there, I've been on here for a little over two years now and I've racked up quite a bit of extra downloads that I don't use or don't need. You could easily get away with the 40 downloads a month. One thing you're gonna wanna do is basically use the wish list feature and go through and wish list after you run out of your 40 downloads that month, go through and use the wish list feature. That way you can start stacking your downloads. One other thing that I've kind of recommended to some of the beginners out there that see the pricing on direct music service versus BPM and think it's a little bit cheaper to go the route of BPM, you don't have to download the subscription for a whole year like I do, or you don't have to pay for it every single month. What you could do is get a pro subscription to direct music service for one month and spend every day of that month downloading as much as you possibly can and uh, you'll definitely get your money's worth especially when you consider on itunes it's like a dollar something per song as long as you download at least 66 songs you will 100 percent get your money's worth so that's my bonus tip of the day for you guys now i was going to show you guys the apps and dive a little bit more into them both direct music service and bpm have had apps they've had them for a while now uh, BPM definitely pushes their app a lot more. They're, they're a lot more about their app. Like I told you guys, I don't use BPM Supreme that often. I'm not too heavy of a user on it. I'm very heavy on direct music service, so I use their app a lot more. That basically has all the different categories. You guys can't really see it, but it has all the different music categories that we have on the left, the pop, the hip hop, the rap, and all the DJ tools. So you can scroll up and go to all the DJ tools below. But basically what I'm doing is I go to the menu here and I go to new and all I'm doing really is I'm listening to all the newest tracks so I can click on a new song and I can listen to it. And that's just really nice for me, especially when I'm driving places to listen to all the new tracks and I can go through and I can click the heart or the wish list button basically. That way when I get back on my computer, I can go to my wish list and download all those tracks that I thought were basically awesome when I was out and about driving somewhere at the gym, etc. So let's talk about how I organize my music. And first off, before the cringes, yes, I use iTunes for all of my music organization as of now and I talked about the reasons why I do this in a very old video and it has to do with backup and syncing across multiple computers but I use a system called iTunes match that's built into iTunes 
I'm not sure if this is going to be supported moving forward, so it's something I'm looking to switch to a different source. I'm heavily considering Dropbox as my new organization, but basically with iTunes Match, it automatically syncs all of my playlists, all of my folders, and my whole entire music library to the cloud, which then syncs to any other computer, iPhone, iPad, that I also have my iTunes account linked to, and it does it all seamlessly. There's nothing I have to click to update. It automatically does it and syncs with all of my other devices, and it's, it just is seamless, and that's why I love it, and that's why I use it. You do have to pay for it, though. It's only like, I can't remember how much it is, but it's like a hundred, maybe 50 bucks, 50 bucks a year or something like that. It's really affordable. But anyways, in iTunes, this is how I organize my music with all of my folders. And uh, this is how I would do it in Serato too if I switched over, except I would have more features like smart crates. So first off, I gotta explain the numbering system. And basically all you gotta look at is these first folders right here at the top. So zero, is always the crate of my current event. So the most recent event I did was Cousins Cultures Fashion Show. So right here is the most recent crate that I made for that where I have the pre-show music, the start show music, the runway music, and the last song. Similar to that, I'll show you guys how a wedding folder breaks down for me, but basically whatever my most current event or events, like say I have a Saturday and Sunday wedding, those folders will all start with zero, so that they're at the very top of my list, and in Serato, they're at the very top of my list as well. And inside those folders, I break down either subfolders or in this case multiple playlists for that event. Now below that we have our ones and these are basically the main playlist that I'm going to be using when I DJ. The first one is main. So if I click on main this is broken down into a bunch of different uh, playlists basically. And I'll, I'll straight up say this, my crate and my playlist organization is something that works for me. I'm not really a person, I'm OCD, but when it comes to DJing, I can't get very detailed with my music organization, otherwise I lose track when I'm DJing, and it's, it's just harder for me, and personally. I like having lists of a lot of songs inside of each one of my playlists, so if I click on like 2000s, I have most of my 2000s music is in there, I got 191 songs, if I click on bar, it's got 574. This is like my bar club playlist, especially when I was doing the events at Pigskin. This is basically my go-to playlist that had all of my tracks. I even have like, uh, these are my high school go-tos. So these are basically high school go-to tracks for high school dances. My Hip Hop Clean has 400 songs in it. This is obviously all Hip Hop Clean songs. I have a Hip Hop Hits list, Fest, DJ Older Music. This used to be like my wedding playlist, but I'll show you guys. I broke down weddings a little bit more in more detail recently. But yeah, in my main list, I have a lot of main playlists, slow songs, throwbacks. Throwbacks for me are like 90s, 2000s. That's like a personal playlist for me. Recently made a TikTok crate. So this has a bunch of popular current TikTok songs, Trap Dubstep, and uh, Rock Top 500, Rock Remixes and EDM. This is just a lot of playlists that are bulk, and um, a lot of tracks are in the main playlist. So if I close that, I can go into now my wedding playlist, and this is by far my, well, obviously for weddings, this is where I am at DJing. I normally don't even open my main folder for weddings, I'm just in these these playlists right here as well as my wedding specific folder for that event. And all of these wedding playlists are by far something that I put a lot of energy into, especially over 2019, to get these dialed in to what is working best. And it's something that's ever evolving. I'm constantly removing and adding songs as I'm doing weddings to make sure I have all of the best songs in there so that I can do the best performance possible. So a lot of these are a lot less than the main ones. So like you got 35 songs in the main, 22 in my 70s, 33 in my all ages. And this kind of explains how my crates are not necessarily categorized. They're categorized based on what I will call them. My all ages playlist is typically where I'm going to go to find music that I'm going to play for my opening set for a wedding. Uh, it's good for all ages. My bangers list is something I'm going to go to periodically to throw in those hype tracks these are all the like these are all the bangers for me and I got like 50 songs in here so I'm going in between the bangers throwing those in periodically throughout my sets you got boy bands pretty self-explanatory these are all boy band chats 
Uh, one little side note in iTunes, I hate the way this shows, so I go to view, view as, and then click songs. So these are obviously all the boy bands, NSYNC, Backstreet Boys. That's what this playlist is for. They're very popular now. Chill Jams, this is kind of, I don't use this, but this is kind of like, this would be a cocktail playlist for me, in a way. These are kind of like cool remixes of Chill Jams, in my opinion. Country, pretty self-explanatory. These are all kind of the most current country songs and both older and newer country that works really well for me. Drunk Sing Along, these are songs that, when the crowd is very drunk, go very well because they are gonna sing their ass off to Bohemian Rhapsody Living on a Prayer, Sugar We're Going Down, Take Me Home Country Roads, Drunk Sing Along, it's self-explanatory. Hip Hop, obviously this is hip hop. A lot of this is 90s, 2000s hip hop. Definitely what is hot right now at weddings. I got like 68 songs in there. I got a pop playlist here with 54 songs. These are all pop songs, works really well. Rock, obviously these are some of the most popular rock songs that I would play at a wedding right now. Slow jams, these are kind of like getting down into the bump and grind portion of the night. Sometimes weddings don't go there, sometimes they do. But I do have a list of like, if we're getting into Pony, if we're getting to Marvin Gaye, let's get it on. If we're getting the remix ignition, remix ignition, um, at least at the end of 2019, is back working yet again at weddings. You can still play it. You can play it again. It's no longer like a negative song, in my opinion. And then lastly, we have a uh, white girl playlist, and um, pretty self explanatory there. Shout out Nick Spinelli. He's the reason why I actually made a white girl playlist. It is super helpful at weddings, especially when you do a lot of weddings like I do. So those are my two number one folders. Underneath my number one folders are my number twos. And in my number twos, we have dinner and cocktail playlists. So these are all all collections of dinner slash cocktail genre music that I would play. I highly recommend if you guys haven't already, uh, download Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1, Volume 2 and make it into a playlist. It is very, very, very good. It is just a great collection of 80s, 90s music that works really well. I have a jazz playlist. This is a very, very good 14 songs for a jazz hour. Um, just good jams. I have a, just different varieties of playlists that I've been creating for dinner and cocktail music portions. Michael Blue Bay, 2000s country, country sing along. We got some slower, we got some upbeat sing along crates. It all works really well for just basically good dinner and cocktail crates that I've made. In the number two weddings folder, this is where I dive into a lot of specific songs for different portions of a wedding. And these nine times out of 10, I am not using at all. What I'm using these for is when I'm sitting down in a wedding meeting with a client and they really don't know what song they wanna have for say, let's go to the reception for a cake cutting. So in the cake cutting, I have different songs that are typically used at a cake cutting. First dances, father daughter, mother son, bridal party dances, garter removal, bouquet toss. I basically gone through and created different playlists with common songs that are typically used during these portions of the evening so that if they don't know what song they want for that portion, I got it. Also made a wedding show uh, playlist. This is kind of just a combination of wedding music that we use at wedding shows to play in the background. And below that we have my high school folders and these are new every single year. I make a new high school folder. Obviously I have not made the 2020 folder but we have high school 18 and we have high school 19. And inside of these folders, what I put together is basically I take all the requests that we get from all the different schools. So prom season's coming up, we're gonna start getting request lists from all these schools using the methods that we have to get requests, um, such as our website, such as using our app. And I'm gonna go through them and I'm gonna kinda categorize them. A lot of songs that are really low BPM and they're not that hype and I don't find them as dancey of a track, I'm gonna throw them in my beginner playlist. So I'm going to throw them into the beginner list of all the tracks that I would play in an opening half an hour, hour set as kids are arriving. I'm going to get rid of a lot of those older tracks. Then there is the hits list. These are the hottest songs that are hot right now for high school school dances. And typically this is an ever evolving hits list as we do a couple schools and I get the reactions to different uh, popular tracks out there and I kind of shuffle around the hits category, remove an ad uh, to get it really dialed down for the second and third school dance that we're doing in the season. I really just dial that down really well. And then we have the requests. And this is obviously all of the very popular requests, both older tracks and newer tracks, slow songs, 
they all go into the request list. Um, so this is just a giant list of all the popular requests that we are getting from the schools. And that's what I do every single high school season to kind of get my high school playlist straight so that when I'm doing a high school school dance, I'm primarily using this folder right here. So the high school 20 folder would be the one I'm using with the beginner, the hits, and the request. And I'll be using that high school go-to list that is in the main folder as well. All right, after that, all of the stuff below this is stuff that I don't use. It's 100% stuff I do not use. So what you guys saw up there at the top, these are primarily, I like to keep myself as minimal and organized as possible, if that makes sense. I don't like to have a lot of junk. I don't have like to have a lot of clutter. Um, I like to have it very simple and clean like this. Lastly, this video has probably got super long at this point. I uh, just wanted to give a quick little plug to uh, DJ Life Clothing, link right here. We have a lot of variety of sizes and different shirts that we make, including the I Hate Teardown shirt. Uh, I still have a lot available. That's all for this video. This was probably super long, so I'm gonna make this outro as short as I possibly can. Thank you guys for watching. That's how I organize music. That's where I download music. I hope that answered a lot of you guys' questions. Don't forget to click that subscribe button so you can see all the new amazing awesome content. Hit the notification bell so you're notified for all the new videos. And like always, oh, follow me on Instagram. Instagram, if you got any questions, hit me up on Instagram. Leave a comment down below. Also, I answer every single comment. I read every single comment, all that fun stuff. I'm speaking very quickly, but... <laughs> Like always, guys, my name is DJ Rick Webb. Keep them records spinning, and I will see you guys next time with another amazing, awesome, helpful video. Peace.